Now I've left uh, this little piece here on the board from the previous session and um, it's theorem 59. Now uh, if you if you had this condition here, if uh, x inverse uh, your subgroup H times X and X is any member of your group G and if that's a subset of H then theorem 59 says you can actually make this stronger. You can you can take take this and derive from it that uh, you actually have an equality. So uh, this this set here is the same as H. So this, this this is the same subgroup as H, if you like. Now to actually prove that, um, remember to prove the equality of two sets. You have to show one's a subset of the other, and the other is a subset of the one. Done many times. Okay. So. Um, now we're given that, right, and we only have to prove it from left to right, which is you know, it's from this to that. So we're given this. So uh, if we can prove uh, this the other way, in other words, H is a subgroup of this. If we can do that, then uh, we can combine it with this, and hence prove the equality. Hence prove that these two sets are equal, right? So the strategy in to prove theorem 59, to prove from this to this, is to, uh, we, just, we just have to prove uh, this one the other way, when, when H is a subset of that. Okay? So, so we have to show that H is a subset of this. Okay, now, you board, right? So, uh, that, you know, that's, that's what we have to show. So, uh, now it's, um, it's a subset. Uh, type relationship, you know, this, this is a subset of this. Now, uh, you know, to show that, you have to prove that any element belonging to this will belong to that. Right? And if that's true, well, then this must be a subset of that. That's the definition of a subset. Right? This is all revision. Okay, well, let, let little h just be any member of your subgroup h. Right? Just little h. Now, um, now H is just E H E. And you may say, well, why do that? Well, usual, it works. It's a, it's a trick for the proof, right? Uh, so a, H is just E H E, uh, same value, and then expand your E in the form of uh, X inverse X, which is obviously E, right? And uh, X, where's, what's X? X is just any element of your group G. Right. So, so you've now got this, you've got E, H, E, and, and the reason you, you do that with this trick is you look at these middle three, and let's label that uh, K, it'll be element K, right? So, so this K here is the, uh, these three here, so K is just X, H, X inverse, right? Now we can rewrite that, these three, and hence K, as uh, y inverse h, oops, right. we, we, we can rewrite that as this, where y has substituted x inverse. Right. So y inverse would be uh, x inverse inverse, which is just x. Right. So, so we've got k now, and k is this middle term, these, these three. Right. So we've now got k in this form. Okay, but uh, and the reason why well, yeah, we did all that is so that we can use this, right? Uh, now x inverse h x, that's here. Is our left hand side? We're given that, right? We assume that's true, and if that's true, we're trying to prove this. Well, actually, given given that this is true, we're trying to prove this, you know, the, the reverse in a sense. All right. Uh, so we're up, yeah. So uh, that's our left-hand side here. Okay. So so we're given that, all right? And this is true for any element x of your group G. Okay. Now look, uh, this is of this form, and and this is true for any x, including y. Okay. So therefore, uh, you know, put put y here for your x. And therefore, now if x inverse h x belongs to uh, h big H, well, so then will y inverse h y belong to big H? So, so we've got this, right? We know that's true, right? 
Uh, and uh, what is this? Y inverse H Y, what is it? Well, it's K, right? It's K. So that means this, which is K, that means that K uh, belongs to H. Right? So K, K belongs to H. And uh, so what does that mean? So K, K belongs to H. Now H, what is H? H, H here, H is, is this, H is that. So H is uh, X inverse KX, right? And that is of this form. So if H is of this form, uh, then all, yeah, the, these, these three, the product, belongs to, 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 to H, right? Because this and this you know, are of the same form. K, K is just a member of H. Remember, uh, when we prove that? Here. Okay? So that means uh, H, which is of that form, uh, belongs to, to this. Right? Uh, so H then belongs to X inverse HX because, because H equals that, and that's of the form that belongs to, to, to this uh, set, right? So H belongs to that. All right, so if H belongs, a little h belongs to big H, then H, little h, belongs to this, right? Therefore, H is a subset of this, right? H is a subset of that, all right? So we've, we've proved, like, the reverse way. Now, given this, and given the left-hand side, we put the two together. You know, one's a subset of the other, and the other's a subset of the one. We put those two together, and uh, we get the equality. Now we we prove these two sets are actually equal. Right? So we've got a stronger a stronger result, uh, and hence hence we have this. So that's that's uh, theorem fifty nine. That's uh, an important result. We'll use. We'll really use that. Okay. Now, uh, now, um, if this is true, uh, this here. So if x inverse big H, <coughs> x equals H, <coughs> where H is some subgroup of your group of your group G, big G. Uh, if that's true for any x, yeah, for any member of your group, then that subgroup H. <coughs> is given a label. Uh, it's called a normal subgroup. I talked about, about this a little at the end of the previous session. Okay, but that's that's the definition of a of a normal subgroup. It's this where this condition is satisfied. Okay? X inverse H X equals H. So if uh, your subgroup satisfies that property, that relationship, that equation, then H by definition is a normal subgroup. Right. Uh, not quite sure why it was labelled normal in the first place. Um, it seems to me rather special rather than normal. Anyway. Okay. Now, um, a bit of practical advice. Now, uh, when you when you have these three dots in this form, like two dots above, one below, uh, that's the symbol, mathematical symbol of because. So because of theorem fifty nine. And if it's uh, this way, like one dot above and two below, that's the mathematical symbol for therefore. Right? So therefore and because. Okie dokie. So uh, because, because of 59, yeah, this, this, this thing, because, because of 59, to, to prove, if, if you're given a subgroup H and you're asked to prove that it's normal, in other words, it's a normal subgroup. In other words, this, that, it, that, that, that subgroup H has this property, right? You, you do not have to prove the equality here. You don't have to show that this is equal to that. You don't need to do that. Because you can use, you can use this result from theorem 59. All, all you have to prove to, to, to prove that a subgroup is in fact normal, a normal subgroup. All you have to do is this. You, you just have to show that this uh, set here on the on the left hand side 
is a subset of uh, the set on the right hand side. And, and, and why is that? Why? Well, because if you, if you can prove that, then theorem 59 says you've got that. Right? You, you don't have to prove this, you only have to do this. Because fifth, automatically, uh, theorem 59 will give you this result if you have that. 